Patch 12.13 is live and there are some massive winners in this patch, so stick around and see what you should play to gain a absolute shit ton of LP. Now, there's probably going to be a micro patch either by the time you watch this or soon after, uh, but there's still going to be some very, very big winners. And so we're going to talk about what the changes were that specifically happened to the champions and an early look at what those effects actually were on win rates. So nerfs to Corky and Volibear, uh, big adjustments to Gwen and Sivir. Sivir is basically a mid-scope rework, and then a whole bunch of buffs to champions who weren't doing very well in various roles. Olaf, questionable to call it a buff. They, they mean to make him a better jungler and a worse top laner. Uh, we'll talk about all this other stuff going on with items as well. So first things up, Neela is coming out. I think she looks really interesting. I think she'll be a really fun champion to play, so stay tuned for that one. Don't have a lot of to say about her other than, hey, the uh, champion spotlight, sadly, not not linked here, but um, something that I did, and you should go watch. It's pretty fun. All right, so Sivir has a big uh, sort of mid-scope rework going on. So uh, base health is down, base mana is up, mana growth is down, base mana regen is down overall, attack damage down early, equal late, attack speed growth is up. Uh, Fleet of Foot is now overall less total move speed because of the shorter duration, the fact that it decays, unless you're hitting really frequently, in which case... It'll be more total move speed. We'll stay tuned for that one. Ricochet, of course, can do really good things there. Uh, Boomerang Blade, base damage is functionally down. Cooldown is worse. However, the cast time now scales the attack speed down to zero seconds, which has got to be a really, really big deal. Probably going to always cast it during their W because W still gives you attack speed. Uh, it also scales damage off of crit chance. We'll talk about the math there as well. Uh, mana cost down a whole lot. Faster out, slower back. Okay, sure. Uh, we're going to keep listing them, and then we're going to actually go break down what's overall going on. Ricochet, less damage but lower cost. However, it hits more times. Um, and the really important thing is uh, there's a cap on the number of bounces, and it can re-hit a target. That's a very, very big deal. So one additional hit um, on a target can certainly be all the damage brought right back into the ability, so stay tuned for that one. Um, spell shield, a, a bit longer of a cooldown, uh, less incentive to max it. You already wouldn't max it, but um, still going to max last. But now it actually heals her for, um, it heals her instead of getting her mana. So we'll take a look at that compared to the mana, um, all the mana changes overall. Also, blocking spell gives you the move speed. Seems like a pretty easy option there as well. Again, mana cost refund is dawn. Uh, on the hunt, now a shorter cooldown, a longer duration, no initial burst of move speed, but it, um, lowers her cooldowns and uh, refunds the duration on takedown. So a lot is going on. Every single ability got changed. Let's talk about what's going on. Okay, so here is her health before and after. Not a huge difference, but definitely a weaker early game. Stay tuned for that. Keep in mind, again, her E heals her, so she's overall... If she blocks, like, at least one ability, she'll probably have more. Keep in mind, right, we're down to 32 health. Just keep that in mind. Back your head, 32 HP. Uh, here is her mana overall. Now, the the... Usual metric I use for mana is what is your mana pool over the course of four minutes. That's roughly a recall timing. So base mana plus mana regen tends to come together to a pretty good picture, which is, yeah, okay, level one, you have a bit more to do because her base mana went up. Uh, but overall, she is more mana gets range. And keep in mind, her E has a uh, has no mana refund. So Sivir definitely gets to spam less from this so far and is definitely less tanky. Let's talk about everything else. Again, uh, base AD down early equal late level 18. It's like 0.1 more AD, not a very big deal. Uh, her base attack speed is up, though, which can feel pretty good. Doesn't affect her level 1. But, you know, from then on, she will feel it a little bit. Keep in mind, there are changes to the W attack speed. We'll talk about that a little bit later and talk about that when we come time to it. Uh, passive distance travel. This is how much distance she travels over the course of two seconds with one passive pop. Um, now, keep in mind that this move speed is front-loaded. It starts higher and it decays quickly. So, in a world where you're like, I just hit Q once and run, you are getting less move speed. In a world where you're constantly triggering, it's always on. And you can kind of see that straight up from the, the like, plus 15 move speed the passive got before the decay happens. So, um, is it a buff? Is it a nerf? Going to depend. But even in the most nerfed case, not a very, very huge difference. So, here is Sivir's Q damage, okay? Uh, so the base damage, uh, with an approximation of how much AD she would buy in regular game, is down pretty meaningfully. Her early wave clear is down, um, her late game wave clear is down, it is definitely a whole lot worse. Except that, as she buys crit chance, she gets more damage. Now, I'm choosing level 8 for the for the mythic to come in, level 11 for like an essence weaver to come in, level 14 for the IE or something, and level 17 for your fourth crit item. Now, I don't know if IE actually modifies this, to be fair. Um, this is, I am not... Adding Affinity Edge's crit damage bonus here, so I, I am unsure about this. Um, that said, I will I will continue to say what I said about things like Zaya. I am a very, very big fan of crit chance ratios on spells for crit marksmen. Um, I like it personally. 
I like them being able to build their special items. Like, Rapid Fire Cannon is really a TF and every marksman item. Hurricane is just an every marksman item, right? Essence Reaver is um, a Fiora and every marksman item, right? Like, um, Infinity Edge is a Yasuo Yone and every marksman item, right? Like, these are the items that marksmen get to buy. And if ever they aren't allowed, like, if ever their optimal build is not those items, you just don't use the items anymore. So I'm personally a fan of of... of pushing those items always in the champions. Basically what that means though, is at three items, you finally do more Q damage, okay? That even at 40% crit chance on a, on a default build of Kraken Slayer, Essence Weaver, or something like that, um, you are doing less Q damage. Sure, it comes out of it faster. The animation's gonna be faster, like that matters, but the actual base damage, or the actual damage of the ability is not higher until three items, okay? That's the break point. Now, as far as the cost, it's a lot cheaper. Well, we talked about her having less mana, okay? Well, it's, it's cheaper by 30%, her mana pool was down by 10%. So overall, she can spam more Qs, not fewer Qs. Okay, just by the way. Um, as far as Quillen's concerned, the Quillen is actually longer. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for that one. She can, she can, you know, spam it without as much constraint for mana cost. However, cooldown, of course, matters in terms of actual wave clearing. Keep in mind, again, damage is, is longer at almost a point's time. Cooldown longer, um, especially early on. It, it gets closer around, you know, rank five of the ability, certainly, but um, much less spam, though definitely a lower cost. All right. Um, so again, late game more damage uh, with the eventual quarter refund mechanics on the ultimate, probably lower cooldown, cheaper, but less impactful. So what this means, by the way, is... Um, Poke Sivir, Lethality Sivir is pretty dead, right? This got hit really, really hard. Lethality Sivir gets hit pretty, pretty hard by this because you don't get more damage, you get crit scaling. Goodbye, Lethality Sivir. She is a crit scaler again, which to be fair, I think is actually the better version of the champion because we already have things like Poke Varus and Jace and like there are decent enough ranged AD casters that Sivir being the, the you know, AOE crit marksman is still, I think, her better identity and I'm glad it's going that way. Okay, so now we have uh, W total bounce damage. So W is the ability to be max second. Um, now, because... W gets a fourth bounce, the total damage of pressing W on secondary targets actually goes up for the first two ranks. Um, once you're around rank three of the ability, the nerfed AD ratio takes over and your ability, in fact, deals less damage. She definitively um, deals less damage um, right now, asterisk, uh, with Ricochet across the entire left turn of the spell as far as that's concerned. Now, the cooldown is lower early game, so that's kind of nice. So her, her early clearing is actually better, right? Um, so that's, that's something to talk about real quick, right? Is, is the damage is up, the cooldown is lower, um, though she does have harder mana constraints, the Q is lower, so you may be okay there, uh, but as time goes on, less damage and a much longer cooldown, that's definitely something to look at. Okay, well, what happens up next? Well, um, the W total minion damage, um, is much tighter. Right, so uh, technically lower at level one, but again, through the first two ranks of the ability, actually does a bit more damage overall, uh, first rank, I should say. And then, yeah, across the four hits, um, it, she will do 100-ish you know, damage to minions at rank one of the ability. Uh, okay, now here's where it gets interesting. Here is the maximum champion damage. So before, she could hit a champion with ricochet one, ricochet two, and ricochet three. Now she could hit a champion twice on ricochet one, two, three, and four. So every W hit can hit a champion with eight ricochets instead of three. So though the AD ratio is lower, and this is the peak nerf right here, um, the fact that instead of three hits, you get eight nerfed hits is a theoretical increase in damage. Now, again, the per cast damage is down from mid game onward. The minion damage is down at almost all points in time, uh, but the theoretical damage is a lot better. This can do a lot. There's definitely a world where you just get the bounces and it feels really, really good. Absolutely possible, right? The other thing that's going on is now that the attack speed is not on R and ranks up at uh, 6, 11, and 16, it ranks up on rank of W, uh, which is, of course, at 8, uh, 10, 12, 13, right? Um, and then also she just, like, scales. She has more attack speed scaling, so the attack speed of her W is, of course, substantially higher, 1 through 5. I will say, sub-level 6 Sivir does feel pretty bad in Ricochet. I am glad it's on the W active. I think this will make the ability feel a lot better. Obviously, for to be fair, most parts of the game, you actually have less attack speed on the ability, and again, less base damage on the ability, um, at least later on, and the cooldown is lower, or, you know, worse later on and whatnot, but feels really, really good 1 through 5, 
where the damage is actually higher and the cooldown is actually better. So the 135 Ricochet is going to feel a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton better. And it can multi-hit champions, which can feel a ton better. And even the minion damage early on is a ton better. So early game Ricochet is definitively substantially better. And then at level 6, it's like barely worse. So who cares? And the more attack speed you buy, if you get Zerk Greaves, whatever, that's going to feel better as well. Um, all right. Here is the difference uh, on the cooldown. You max it last, so you're not going to feel this almost at all. It's basically a non-change. Uh, but instead of getting 110 mana, you get 40 to 230 health. Um, right, again, we talked about 32 being the amount of health uh, that she has less. You block literally one spell, and you're back on that one. Now, again, the fact that you're not getting mana back is going to make her more mana constrained. And she's going to be, I think, pretty hard bound to Essence Reaver. I think that's okay. Our cooldown overall better. Great. All right, so let's talk about this in sum total again. Again, duration is higher. Um, overall move speed is the same here, but the line to really point up is basic attacks during on the hunt reduce basic ability cooldowns by 0.5 seconds per attack. Now, what that means, though, is, by the way, during Ricochet, if you're using your ability at all, you're hitting four times. Guess what that does? It lowers the cooldown from 10 to 8 seconds. So I, I hit W. I auto-attack four times. My cooldown is now 8, not 6. It's pretty close overall. Um, and... Further attacks do better and better. So if I get another two attacks, um, it's seven instead of six uh, before getting Ricochet back up again. So, um, and then, you know, things with like the Q cooldown, right? Two auto attacks gets my Q back. Um, that's pretty reliable. So um, real good chances works out pretty well. Also pointing out that the basic attacks um, don't have to be onto enemy champions. So you can't hit minions to get it back. Uh, again, it's only during the R though. So it's not like you're going to hit R to wave clear. I mean, you could, I guess, but... Uh, that's what it looks like. So, cool changes. And overall, by the way, um, on the first day of the patch, Sivir gained 4.5% win rate and is at about 54% Westing win rate um, for average players on the patch so far. She is slated for a hotfix nerf as far as I can tell. So, you know, that. But Sivir is still going to be in a very, very good spot. Sivir is definitely one of the queens of the patch. Next up is Corky. Corky is being buffed as AD Corky. He is being nerfed as AP Corky. The bonus AD ratio is going up substantially on Gatling Gun. Gatling Gun does absurd damage, by the way. If you can if you can stick this, it's really good. Um, I think the cooldown is too long, but otherwise I would say there's a chance you could try to play some kind of Bruiser Corky build where you just rely on Gatling Gun for all of your damage, but the cooldown is really, really long, so it's not really reliable. But if you can get but if you can get Gatling Gun online, it's like maybe the most damaging basic building in the game. I think it might be number one. It's really, really high. Um, and then Missile Barrage gets a base damage nerf by 10. And an AP ratio nerf from 20% to 12%, which is a very, very big deal. So let's scroll down to Corky and see what happened. And Corky E damage is up pretty substantially. 760 base damage. Well, 760 total damage on a typical AD build. R damage down uh, pretty substantially, 14 to 10%. Um, now, of course, a Ludens build on Corky would certainly... Um, you know, you have the Ludens itself to do more flat damage, but, so, you know, might not look quite as bad. But looking at Corky overall... Um, his second item, Luden's win rate, is pretty tight with other items right now. His first item, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of, not a lot of data because Corky's not that popular. He did overall lose about 1% win rate on the patch. Um, but as far as figuring out builds, we need more time because there's not a lot of data because he's not a very popular champion. Still, though, definitely nerfs poke AP Corky, and I think a pretty good change. Uh, next up is Elise, who is getting uh, quite a bit of base health, a little bit of health growth, and a bit of base armor, uh, as well as a little bit of damage on uh, max Q, which is pretty standard. So here is her health before and after. Here is this factoring in armor for her physical durability. Um, I will say the more they give Elise base armor, the better I think she is in the hands of lower MMR players. My understanding of how high MMR players play Elise is they constantly use Spidelings to tank all the damage. Um, and let them die. They recast them later on with getting human form spells out, and she doesn't really take damage in the jungle for good Elise players. I am glad they are softening that blow somewhat uh, by giving her some base armors so that she can take the attacks a bit more and it will feel a little bit better. So a bit more overall durability. Um, here is Elise's Q damage uh, with a factor of um, expected AP purchases and a half health average target. Uh, the 0 to 20 base damage still does some pretty decent heavy lifting, um, but overall, you know, can scale down over time. Um, as more and more of the base damage or more of the damage is in the AP ratio and the amount of health that opponent targets have, um, Definitely an increase in damage, definitely does matter some. At least seem to gain around 2% win rate in the hands of average players, which puts her in a very good spot for average players in solo queue. If you are waiting on playing Elise or like you wanted to jungle pick up, Elise is in a good spot. There's a chance that she will overtake Ultra High Elo. We'll see, but she looks to be in a pretty good spot right now. Um, Evelyn gets some nice, what feel more like quality of life buffs personally. I don't think they are super, super huge, uh, but... Uh, the base heal per second goes up uh, at later levels. 
uh, the MR shred of W goes up, and your R gets you to shroud a bit sooner, all of which are really nice, but none of them feel gigantic. So here is the damage amp on a base MR melee champion, so what, like 32 plus 2 per level, basically. Um, this is how much M MR they have facing the old W and the new W if they don't buy any MR. Now, the more MR they buy, the more a increase in 10% of a shred matters. Um, but this means that, you know, your ability to assassinate someone who's on roughly base MR or like a range chain with a hex drinker or like Merc Treads is going to be roughly around here as well. Um, and you're going to get this. You're going to get something pretty uh, okay at 3% sort of situational damage, which is popping your W on them. As far as the amount of heal per second on the passive, cool, it goes up to double, but I don't think this is a very, very big deal. Keep in mind that um, I did not actually include her base health regen in this. I maybe should have, uh, but I don't believe this is a very big deal in the first place. The fact that R is going to restart these sooner definitely is kind of nice. Overall, though, this doesn't feel gigantic, and indeed it is not. Evelyn gains under 1% win rate. Uh, she is still sub-50% for most players. But if you're a big Evelyn player, and it's still a buff, it does still feel pretty decent. Excuse me. Next up is Fiddlesticks. Gets a quarter second on his Terrified Iteration and 125 damage, plus a 0.25 ratio increase on Crowstorm. Actually pretty solid stuff overall. Early data indicates a 4% win rate buff here. Here's the fear duration before and after. Here's the Crowstorm damage with approximation of ability power built in a real game. Uh, since both the base damage and the AP ratio changed. This is very, very big. Fiddlesix looks to be a very big winner in the patch. Is not absurdly overbearing, but around 52.5% win rate. Looks really, really strong. Looks to be in a very good spot. So Fiddlesticks, definitely a champ worth looking at. Next up is Galio, whose tornado damage went up pretty substantially um, from 8% plus 2.6% with 100 AP to 10% plus 4% 100 AP uh, if they sit in the entire tornado. So the overall tornado damage is up 28 to 45% um, as more and more of the damage is carried by the AP ratio, which is buffed by a really substantial amount. Um, this is some really substantial damage. Um, Galio in mid lane gained the most, since again, most of the buff is in Q. Uh, sitting on targets, uh, and mostly in the AP ratio of Q, which only mid-Galio really buys compared to support Galio, but mid-Galio get about 1.6% win rate, um, solidly above 50% now for the average player in solo Q. Looks really, really good. I think it's actually a well-aimed buff. This is, a, I think, really good number selection by the designer who did these changes. Um, looks pretty solid overall. Seems like a great change. Happy to see it. Good job, Galio. Definitely, definitely playable. Next up, we got a big suite of changes to Gwen. The goal here, I know, is to reduce some of her pro skew. So, um, baseline stat growth, I think it always tends to help uh, lower ELO players. So, baseline health regen growth over time. Um, Thousand Cuts has um, lower max damage against monsters, so she's going to be a worse jungler, a worse flex pick. Uh, keep in mind, though, there's much of changes here. So, baseline Q damage is up by 1 to 5. Um, and keep in mind that um, on a full cast of Q, you can get five of these. Um, I believe that's accurate. Uh, final snip damage is up by 15 and a, um, well, sorry, 15 to uh, 25. My, no, 50, oh, sorry, 15 to 35. There we go. My brain just like wasn't calculating correctly. Um, as well as a 0.1 AP ratio. Very, very big deal for the final snip dealing really good damage. However... It is not all true damage anymore. One quarter of that damage is now going to be mitigated by MR. We'll take notes on that one. Um, deals three quarters damage to minions at all times. Unless they're very low, then they will pretty much one-shot them. So let's talk about what happens here. Well, here is the health regen growth before and after. Um, again, substantially up in the late game in terms of sort of sustaining in a long lane, staying out there in a side lane, trading and, and staying alive. That seems pretty reasonable. Here is the Q maximum damage possible with uh, using all five mini snips and the big snip at the end with an approximation of how much AP she would buy. And it's up a pretty much flat 25%. There's a 25% buff to Q. That is the math. Um, now, it's worth noting that, again, this does three quarters damage to minions, right? Uh, which means... The minion damage is unchanged. Her wave flare goes nowhere. Her PvP damage goes up. Um, now, if one quarter of damage was strictly cut off in the first place, we'd be at roughly the same spot. But one quarter of her damage is simply mitigated by MR. Even if you were against a hundred magic resist um, for the center snip, where you would actually get true damage to the ability instead of magic damage to the ability, even if you were against a hundred MR, this would still only be a 12.5% damage cut. Um, and so in basically all cases... Q does more damage. It does a little bit less wave clear because technically one quarter off 1.25 is a bit below one. A 20% nerf would be baseline against minions. Um, but the fact that it's going to one-shot minions at low health, um, it's still going to look pretty good here. You're going to be fine. Um, this looks like a very nice overall buff. And again, I think damage on Q is strictly up overall. Um, you'd have to be against... Um, I mean, what would you have to lose the... Like, 
you have to be against like 400 MR or something, like something around there for this to actually matter. For the the, the last quarter of your damage has to be cut so heavily to like 15% damage to actually not have this be a buff overall, uh, to be clear. Uh, she also gained some uh, an extra plus 5 and a 2% EP ratio on the armor MR. However, the duration is down. Duration is down to 4%. Her ability to function in a team fight is being cut pretty heavily. Now, certainly, um, W's duration does a lot of heavy lifting. Um, I know this was intentionally kept longer when they nerfed the Singe Ultimate a while back, but the idea is um, that it was really pivotal to her ability to actually team fight. Um, end of the day, they're going to pull the trigger, say, okay, the duration is lower. Uh, but hey, while you're in here, your overall durability is up a little bit with um, more armor and MR than before. This is a okay-ish approximation for how much durability she gets um, off this buff. It's going to be a bit lower than this in the real world, but it's not too bad. Um, but again, duration down substantially. It means she's definitely, definitely squishier. As far as skip and slash, the bonus damage on hit is up by 5 and 5%. Bonus range increased by another 25. Uh, the cooldown has a pretty big change where the base cooldown is changed and the refund is changed. So let's do the math here. Uh, here is the bonus damage given before and after, up a solid 35% or so. So again, Q damage is up, E damage is up, definitely doing more damage to the champion. Uh, but much, much, much worse early game. Much longer cooldown on early game E for quite a while. And only until max rank of E is it finally a buff onto the ability. Yes, it does more damage, but her mobility is down by a ton. It's down by a ton. And keep in mind that this dash was how she got these big Qs off, right? She got this damage by dashing into the Q. She can longer dash into the Q nearly as well. So... In the hands of skilled players, this is actually a Q damage nerf as well. The cooldown on this is definitely relevant for ability to trade. This will do a lot. Good job to nerfing a lot of the early game power here. I think this is actually another uh, pretty well-aimed nerf. And then one minor, one final thing going on here as well is R is gaining 5 to 15 damage and an AP ratio. Uh, keep in mind that Needlework applies her passive for the max health damage, but it also resets on its own. You don't have to damage an enemy champion. Um, I believe actually the recast was land and auto attack. Um, not on the enemy champion. This was press R and then just like auto attack and minion. Now you can recast it. I believe that's accurate. Uh, but now it's just simply after one second. So fair enough here. So the R damage, of course, counting for the percent health damage as well on an, uh, an approximation of a target is still up about 10%. So damage is up everywhere. Usability is up in a lot of places like the R always being recastable and whatnot. Um, but team fight prowess is down. Um, repositioning is down. And... Um, the sum result of these changes, the sum result is that Gwen gained 6.5% win rate for average players. For the first time in maybe literally ever, Gwen has an above 50% win rate for average players. Now, is she going to be too good in the hands of pros? Almost certainly. But Gwen has been absurdly resuscitated for the average player in solo queue. How long will it last? I don't know. Probably going to get hotfix nerfed. But right now, you can play her in solo queue and not troll if you're not a absurd Gwen Master. Very, very big deal there. Uh, pick rate and ban rate should skyrocket before too long, but a very, very big deal. Next up is Karthus, who gains a pretty simple 3 armor and 9 health growth. So this boy is a bit tankier. I think, in general, armor helps low MR players do a better job in the jungle, as he can take quite a bit of damage. Um, I also think this buffs his bot lane quite a bit, because physical damage is in bot lane. Karthus is generally a pretty good bot laner. Now, of note, um, this isn't uh, the most exciting change, of course, at all. So here's the health total. Here is the uh, total durability factoring in the armor. You can look at that data table. Uh, he gained about 1% win rate in the jungle. Still feels a little bit weak overall. Um, he gained the most, unsurprisingly, in the bot lane, where his armor means the most. Uh, as a bot lane, Karthus is towing the line toward overpowered. Um, data is limited, of course, right? It's it's day one of bot lane Karthus. He's not a popular champion. He's one that I have played a fair bit of. I like him a lot. I think he's a very good champion. Um, but yeah, bot lane Karthus appears to be maybe very good. What's also interesting is there is theoretically a chance that support Karthus exists um, with very, very limited data um, around 700 games. He has a 50% win rate. 700 games is not enough. This is a giant grain of salt, but it's possible that both bot lane roles of Karthus are playable. I am not actually recommending support Karthus. I have no idea if it's actually good. Again, I'm just saying, hey, there is a chance it might be playable. I don't know. These buffs certainly, of course, nerf those roles. Or sorry, buff those roles because armor means the most in the bottom lane. Um, okay, great. 
Next up, we have a buff to Kled. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, once in cooldown off W, not much to talk about math-wise, but the Q damage going up by a 0.05 bonus AD ratio on, on Q1 and a 0.1 bonus AD ratio on Q2. Uh, here is the Q1 damage. Here is the Q total damage. It's about a 2% damage increase, mostly increasing with game time as you get more items. Not a big surprise there. Next big thing is a gigantic giga huge buff to Master Yi, who also gained about 6% win rate. This champion is right now sitting at 56% win rate in solo queue for the average player. This champion is absurdly too good. The banner should be 100% as soon as possible, but I do appreciate the design work that's going in here. Obviously, he needs nerfs, of course, uh, but the idea was to try to continue to alleviate the um, average versus high MMR skew on the champion. So, attack range tends to be a, a high MMR skewed stat. Trying to alleviate that there. Uh, choosing where to land on queue adds some more finesse to the champion, which can do a whole lot for skilled Master Yi players. Uh, Meditate cooldown is down by a ton. Mana cost is definitively up, but worth noting that the damage reduction is up substantially. So while you're channeling, the damage reduction is the same, of course, but for the first 0.5 seconds, it is 90%. So, you know, flash hitting this to block some damage is meant to be a skill test, a reaction test. Keep in mind, it's the first 0.5 seconds, so you have to perfectly time it against that tower shot or whatever else. It's meant to be a very, very tight timing to add a reflex test to Master Yi to add some high elo power to the champion. Um... Um, now, lingering damage reduction um, is just simply 0.5 seconds after meditate ends. Um, so you always get so basically because meditate lasts four seconds, you can last for four seconds, and then when you come out, you still keep it for 0.5. Um, kind of interesting thing there. Um, but yeah, overall, um, right? Add a reflex test, reflex test to the W. Uh, you can spam this one really easily in team fights to use it, you know, maybe a second or a third time. You get a reset with your R. It's going to be back pretty quickly. Uh, location, you land on the Q. Attack range is there. And yes, Master Yi is absurdly, absurdly strong. Now, none of this added raw damage, right? None of this added raw damage. Uh, I mean, you could argue the attack range matters, of course. None of it added raw burst. Um, but uh, a bunch of uh, you know, gameplay tweaks, the ability to, um, you know, redirect damage, whatnot, was a very gigantic buff. Master Yi is an incredibly, incredibly strong spot. And so, yes, play him while you can. He's definitely going to be nerfed. Uh, next up is Olaf. Um, and by the way, like, here's the mana cost for one second of meditate. It's the only thing that's really mathable here, right? Um, so, Olaf lost some health regen, lost health regen growth. Um, gained some attack speed on the passive and got some worse mana cost on his Q. This means Olaf generally really, really, really got nerfed. In the top lane, he lost about 1.2% win rate. In the jungle, he lost only 1% win rate, so this should have technically shifted him slightly away from top and slightly toward jungle, but still not a great jungler, but has become a relatively balanced top laner now for average players, so that's nice. So here's the health regen before and after. Um, here is the maximum attacks per second at no HP or low HP for his attack speed growth. Um, Obviously, that can be a clear speed buff, but um, and though the mana cost nerf shouldn't affect Jungle Olaf that much, it does some, to be fair. Uh, not horrible, but yeah. Uh, relatively balanced down top lane and relatively weak in the jungle. Renekton gets a new tool, which is an attack damage ratio on R, which is really, really cute, really interesting. Um, R damage is not up very much early on. In general, ult buffs don't tend to do a lot for uh, win rates, but they do a lot for perception. We might actually see Olaf back in pro play as a result. Uh, he gained 0.4% win rate in solo queue. Um, that's actually within a uh, margin of error of statistical uncertainty, by the way. Now, of course, it is a strict buff if, as long as you're building attack damage, which of course you are. Uh, so he is stronger, uh, but not by a very large amount. So not a lot to write home about. 58% win rate, solo queue champion. Not a whole ton going on here. Next up, though, we do have Talia. Um, some nice stuff around the, the passive not resetting off of proc damage. Um, same thing for Weaver's Wall when damaging wards and traps and whatnot. So that's kind of nice. Just some, some cleanup there, which is good. Um... But here's what's going on with the champion. Five damage increase on Q, which, which pushes forward on the five rock and the boulder. Five mana cost help on the Q as well. Compensation nerf on jungle damage. Uh, but now the boulder stuns jungle monsters. So that should do, of course, quite a bit for jungle power. But as far as we can tell, jungle Talia gained about 1.5% win rate. Uh, it appears as though mid Talia gained even more, although it is very early on in the patch and Talia is um, a relatively unpopular champion. But appears to be circling 50% win rate in three rolls of jungle, mid, and support. It might be that mid lane actually gained the most, but again, limited data, hard to say, but a pretty solid buff and pretty playable across mid, jungle, and support. So play what you like. Seems to be pretty solid overall. Uh, mana cost changes, of course, do more for a mid laner than they will for a jungler. Um, and she appears to have gained more win rate in mid lane than jungle as a result of that. 
Okay, next up is, and we have, I guess we have some, uh, some, some math real quick. Just five flat damage. Not a huge deal, but it does matter a little bit. Uh, mana cost down, again. Can mean more for mid lane. All right, on to Vex for actual. Uh, Q cooldown is down by one second. Q damage is up by a 0.1 AP ratio. I just assumed you max Q first on Vex. I didn't actually double check, but I assume that's true. Um, here is the AP ratio buff being a 3 to 7% damage buff. Um, it takes her from 400 AP to 343 to double. So now she has a real champion's AP ratio. Good job. That's nice to see. Um, and then the cooldown being down substantially, of course, it means quite a bit as well. Vex appears to have gained around 3% win rate in mid lane bringing her to around a 52% win rate champion. Um, very, very strong. I expect to see Vex in pro play. Vex to see her quite a lot in solo queue as well. Interestingly, her ban rate is actually down slightly so far in the patch, but no, she is very, very strong. You should definitely play her. Not completely overbearing, but definitely a real strong champion. Um, next up, we finally have nerfs to Volivar, who's doing far too much. Now, note this move speed is doubled while running toward enemy champions, so call it a 4% move speed nerf on Thundering Smash, as well as a 10 damage nerf on this ability as well. It's an ability you're going to max first, probably still. So here is his overall move speed without boots with the ability as you rank it. It's down about 3% no matter what. Um, here's the overall damage of the ability down early game as well. So, you know, a bit of a nerf to his early ganking power, uh, his early ganking power more than anything else, uh, but an early game nerf specifically. Um, his W damage is down by 5, as well as 1% of the bonus health ratio. So here's the damage, uh, down by a solid about 8%. Um, um, as you scale, as you get more damage, uh, more bonus health, the, the, the numbers go down and down and down. You get then ranks up to the ability, which make it do a bit more damage. And then, again, down it goes uh, with time as well. Uh, e damage also got cut down. Uh, the flat damage is the same, but it lost 2% uh, targets max health damage, which definitely can matter here as well. So here is a rough approximation of the E damage, which is down about 10%. So, uh, again, we lost uh, about, you know, 5-10% damage off the Q. We lost 5-10% damage off the W, and we lost about 10% damage off the E. Um, overall, Volibear deals about 5-10% less damage. Now, of course, he still has basic auto attacks. He still has R, um, or he still has passive, uh, but... Overall 5% less damage on the champion. Overall 3% less move speed on the Q ganks. Definitely matters a whole lot. Volibear lost around 3% win rate. This brings him now to a only slightly strong and not overbearing jungler. It also brings him to a eh, slightly weak but playable top laner. Um, pretty good data on this to know what's going on. Volibear, though, on to be clear, Volibear is still a good jungler. You can totally play Volibear. Volibear is definitely still good. If you want to play him, please feel free. He is still a good jungle despite a very large set of nerfs. He was very overpowered. Um, final big change is Divine Thunder gets a small rework, a small reshape. Um, the healing, or sorry, the damage is now, the max health damage is cut in half, but it now has a base 80 ratio attached. Um, stay tuned to the math on that one. Uh, the heal goes from half of damage dealt to about two-thirds of damage dealt. I believe this is all written really improperly. I believe that the um, numbers should actually be... Um, both lower here uh, by a bit um, and um, lower here by a bit. As far as I can tell, uh, the numbers are not quite what's written in the patch notes. Um, I went to spot check because if you read these numbers appropriately, right, 65% of pre-mitigation damage plus 100% base AD, this would be like a like 2.5x the heal. Um, and I spot checked a bunch of champions win rates. I looked at Jax, I looked at Volibear, I looked at Camille. None of them had Divine Sunder as, like, gaining 4% win rate on the patch, so I believe that this written down is wrong. The item is not actually overall buff. Let's talk about what's going on with the item, though, which is here's Divine Sunder. Now, this is specifically picking a target who is gaining a bunch of health. I picked a relatively high target who is buying HP, um, and here's the damage before and after. As a result, damage is down against HP stack. So Scions, you know, Volibears who are going tanky, Dr. Mundos, whatnot. Damage is, in fact, down against them as the max health damage is doing a lot of heavy lifting, damage before, damage after. Now, even against those targets with dealing less damage, uh, because the healing is up by two-thirds, or, well, up, you know, two-thirds of the damage instead of half the damage, um, the healing is up. So against a tanky champion, um, damage is down, healing is up. Now, if we don't give them um, a bunch of free bonus health, and we pick a typical target here, um, who is not buying health, you know, a squishier champion overall, the numbers look like this. Against a squishier target, you actually are doing more damage than before. Um, obviously, the healing is even higher as well. But this is what it comes down to, is that the item definitively heals for a lot more health. Um, but it is less of a tank buster, um, though a stronger item overall against squishies, right? It is it is objectively buffed when fighting Ash. It is objectively buffed when fighting Mastery. It is objectively buffed when fighting Talia. It is lower damage, higher healing when fighting Scion. And, of course, the... Um, 
damage gained from this. Uh, a good rule of thumb is 2% armor pen is roughly 1% more damage. So at 2 items, you do about 1% less damage. At 3 items, you do about 2% less damage. And at 4 items, you do about 3% less damage. Um, is that a really big deal? It might be. Uh, keep in mind that this item is doing... I mean, at 3 items, the you know, at, at 3 items, 4 items, right? We're here. Our Divine Sunder does 3% more damage. But our overall kit does 3% less. So, you know, in those contexts, it's definitely a nerf to the overall offensive power of the item. Uh, because the armor pen... Unique passive was doing something, right? You're getting two and a half percent more damage every single time you got a new item. This is roughly the math. It's it's pretty accurate. It's close enough that it's fine. Um, so definitely, definitely matters there, right? Um, obviously, these upgrade to the Orin upgrade as well. No big deal. But uh, yeah, as far as I could tell, I looked at some win rates. The item does not seem to be overperforming. So a reshape on the item. There you go. Now, good to see that Demonic Embrace and Leandries finally stack on multiple users. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, you cannot refresh one another's application. That's, of course, a good change. But you're no longer trolling by having Demonic and Leandries in the same team. I'm glad they made this change. I think it's very, very good. Glad they did it. Also of note is Duskblade, Eclipse, and Prowler's Claw all have 5 move speed on the uh, Mythic passive. This is, all seems very interesting. All seems very cool. Um, I think move speed is a cool um, stat for... Assassins, so I think it's kind of neat to see it. Uh, the overall shield, by the way, on Eclipse is going down. Certainly was getting poached by ranged champions a little bit. So move speed, of course, also a very good ranged champion stat. So less shielding, that's all fine. A change on objective bounties, by the way. So the the linger actually lasts for longer, but they will now fall off. Um, so let's see. Let's talk about this one at a time, right? So they will linger for longer. Okay, great. Um, but as soon as you claim a bounty... Cancels all other lingers. Um, so instead of getting multiple multiple possible linger bounties in five seconds, you get a chance to say, okay, look, you finally worked back the lead. You can claim one more thing, right? As soon as you have, as soon as you are no longer at a major deficit, right? So you go from being, well, we're screwed to we finally got here. You can go one more. Now it is possible that like you were here, you got you know six kill shutdowns. Like, you got the dragon bounty first, then you got five kill shutdowns, and you actually caught up, and then you got a turret bounty. Like, that's possible, sure. Um, that is technically possible, but I think largely not going to be the case. Um, but it does cancel all the other lingers, which is good. Um, gold accumulating passives such as Draven and Gangplank and TF Hunter longer count towards bounties. That is, of course, a very good change. That is, I think, very, very silly. Um, this will be a very light buff to those champions, light buff to that rune, because, of course, it could contribute to a comeback. Uh, glad that's gone, because it's obviously very, very silly. Um, now, of note is the way Dragons and Towers are weighted with Calculator for Bounties has been updated to be more in line with player expectations. So my expectation with this is that, like, um, uh, like, early Dragons will probably mean less, um, I would guess. Um, as far as Towers, I couldn't tell you. I don't know if, like, Inhibitor Towers can be, like, worth more than Outer Tower. I have no idea. Um, I know I have access to, like, what they actually did. I do not have that. And I'm not here to leak that. Um, like, obviously, they have a system in the background, right? And obviously, they don't want to tell people the system. It's not my place to be like, no, designers, you made the wrong choice and, like, leak stuff, right? I'm not going to do that. Even if I did know, and again, I actually don't. Um, I could find it. I'm not looking. Um, my expectation is probably early dragons are going to be lower. I don't know how they're going to reshape towers and whatnot. Um, but um, I would I would expect that, like, a lot of the value is as you get closer to soul, and soul is a real threat. Oh, They've got the threat of a real soul. That's a big win rate change. Like, that might mean bounties, right? Um, whereas individual dragons themselves may be worth a little bit less. Um, okay. Uh, version 2 of this buff. Uh, jungle monsters and wards now visible instantly. Even upon dashing or blinking in a visible range. Uh, maybe it was uh, very brief and now it's uh, a little bit even shorter. Uh, I know there's one in the previous patch, but glad to see it here. Um, some game mode stuff for Ultimate Swivel coming in. Shadow All Splash coming. Cool stuff. Alrighty. So... Let's talk about 12.13 TLDR, yeah? Let's talk about it. Neil is coming out. Looks really cool. Sivir is in a really interesting spot. TLDR, um, let's talk about it. Her Q scales off crit, and until you get uh, three items, she deals less damage on Q overall. Uh, Ricochet, uh, theoretically, deals less damage as you rank it up. However, it can bounce four times, and it can re-hit targets. Um, overall, the sum total is Ricochet is better like ranks levels one through seven, it's a little bit worse from then on, unless you get multi-hits, in which case then it's better again. So if you multi-hit the same target, damage is better. If you don't multi-hit, it's worse in the late game. Uh, Spell Shield no longer gives mana. Instead, it gives health. 
Um, so that's pretty interesting, and that compensates for her health loss. But overall, uh, I believe mana is going to be tighter on Sivir, but she will survive lanes a bit better. Um, so we'll see what that feels like for the wave clear, uh, but that's kind of where it is. Um, on the Hunt has a longer, uh, or a better cooldown and a longer duration, um, and uh, gets uh, gets to refund this on Killer Assist, and refunds basic cooldowns while doing uh, while on the ult as well. So a lot of snowballiness during the ultimate is possible. Um, pretty exciting, right? Overall, this has been a very, very large buff to Sivir. She has gained a lot of win rate. Um, I believe she is slated, she is slated for a micro patch nerf, a relatively small one. She will end up better after the micro patch than she was pre patch overall. Definitely a strong champion, definitely worth playing. And lethality Sivir feels pretty dead, but crit Sivir is alive and well, and I'm a fan of all that stuff. Uh, Corky gets some damage on Gatling Gun through an AD ratio buff and lose some damage in R through a base damage nerf and an AP ratio nerf. This has been about a 1% win rate nerf to Corky, um, and we may see the death of AP Corky in pro. Elise gains a solid amount of durability through base health, health growth, and base armor, as well as some easy damage onto Q. This has been a pretty substantial buff, and Elise feels pretty good for most players in solo queue. I think it's very, very minor, almost quality of life uh, level buffs. This ends up being about a 3% damage buff on your primary target with W. Overall, pretty minor stuff. Not the best champion. Fine, but nothing huge here. Fiddle 6 gains a quarter second on Terrify and about 10% more damage or so on Crowstorm. More like 15%, I think. Um, pretty big deal. Fiddle 6 is a big winner here. Fiddle 6 is very strong. Definitely a good champion to play. Galio gains very substantial damage through the AP ratio on his Q. This buffs mid Galio a lot. Other roles, well, you know, things like support Galio, not so much. He's not building AP. Uh, but mid Galio looks to be in a very, very good spot. Very good damage and a solid win rate. So uh, mid Galio definitely in a good spot right now. Uh, Gwen gets a really, really huge reshape. Uh, health regen growth is up. Damage monsters is down. 25% um, damage increase on Q. 25% uh, or 20% duration cut on Hollowed Mist. Um, about a 20% damage increase on Skip and Slash, but a lower cooldown until max rank. And about a 20% damage increase on Needlework. She does a lot more damage, but she is much less mobile until late game. And she has um, better regen in late game. This ended up being a gigantic winner buff to Gwen. She is strong in the hands of average players. She may be overbearing in pro. We'll see. But Gwen is good. Go play Gwen. Karthus gets very, very light buffs to his base armor and health growth. The biggest winner appears to be bot lane Karthus, who is generally quite strong. Bot Karthus is good. I actually like playing him quite a bit as well. Um, jungle Karthus, eh. It's okay. Mid Karthus, fine, but Bot Karthus is his best role, and armor buffs help him there for sure. Uh, Kled gets a little bit more damage, um, around 5% on his Q through some AD ratio buffs. A nice one second clone uh, buff on W as well. Uh, pretty decent. Not a bad set of changes overall. Not a huge buff, uh, but relatively balanced champion. Master Yi gains absurd power through 50 attack range, the ability to point where he lands on Q, and the ability to snap cast W for damage reduction, which is going to be a very, very big deal. 90% for the first half second. Um, I believe he is also slated for a micro patch nerf, but Master Yi is probably still going to be an incredibly, an incredibly good spot. Play him. He is very, 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 very strong. Olaf loses some health regen, uh, gets worse mana costs, but gets more attack speed early on in the game, which is meant to alleviate the nerfs and make him a better jungler. Overall, loses win rate in both roles, did lose more in top than in jungle, but is still a relatively weak jungler and a overall decent top laner. Renet then gets an attack damage ratio on his R. Uh, TLDR is his break even at rank 1 and then a buff at rank 2 and 3. Um, ults tend to be pretty low win rate um, as buffs, so didn't gain a ton. A little bit better, but overall still not a very strong champion. And probably not something you're going to play very much right now in solo queue. We'll see if there's more buffs later on down the line. Uh, Talia gets a 5 damage on her Q, which pushes forward to the 5 rock as well as the boulder. Gets a 5 mana cost buff on Q as well. Um, and some compensation stuff on jungle where... Um, the boulder now stuns. However, the mana cost buff is a very, very big deal and appears to have buffed mid lane Talia more than jungle Talia. Mid Talia is in a good spot. Jungle Talia is okay. Um, and off we go. Um, yeah, pretty how I feel. Jungle Talia is okay. Mid Talia is good. Uh, Vex gets one second off the Q cooldown as well as an AP ratio buff on Mistral Bolt. Definitely feels pretty good. Solid win rate buff here. Um, looks to be very, very strong right now. Totally worth playing. Totally strong a champion. Volibear gets um, 10 damage off his Q, um, a solid 10% damage off the W, and a solid 10% damage off the E. TLDR, Volibear does about 5-10% less damage across all of his abilities, um, moves about 3% less quickly during Thundering Smash, and that ends up being about a 3% win rate nerf on the champion. He is still overall strong as a jungler, he is now a bit weak as a top laner, uh, but if you like playing Volibear, he is still, again, a strong jungler, totally worth playing, but no longer a mandatory ban for all your solo queue needs.
Divine Sunderer ultimately uh, deals less damage to tanks, more damage to squishies, and heals more overall. Um, that said, the Mythic Passive is uh, pretty meaningfully nerfed to about 1% less damage across your entire kit per Mythic Passive gained. Uh, that ends up being a pretty solid nerf for the item as well. So Offensive Bent definitely down, Healing Bent definitely up. Demonic Embrace and Landers now stack across teammates. That is a good change. And Duskblade, Eclipse, and Prowler's Claw all give 5 move speed on the Mythic Passive, as well as a very small nerf to Eclipse on ranged champions here. So, sorry, Jace players, uh, but that is going down for you. Overall, interesting stuff. Um, cool to see Assassins have that move speed angle. I think the move, move speed that scales with game time is actually a really cool thing for Assassins, so that seems pretty neat. Um, as far as objective managers are concerned, a change here as well. So, they will be uh, recalculated a little bit on dragons and turrets and whatnot. Um, champions with gold earning passives like Draven and GP uh, don't count towards bounties now. And though the linger duration has increased, claiming a single bounty during the linger will turn off all other bounties. So, interesting stuff right there. Okay, great. Um, also, they will start to fall off a little bit earlier um, as the leaders reduced. So, you get into this linger a little bit earlier on and then shut it down with a single claim if you're able to do so. Um, Another follow-up on the instantly reveal jungle monsters and wards when you walk into a brush. That's a good change, of course, as well. Cool beans. That is the patch. It's a pretty cool patch. There are some huge, 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 huge winners, of course. Gwen, Master Yi, Sivir, Fiddlesticks, um, and Vex, I think, all gained a ton and are really worth uh, your consideration. But there you go. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.